Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shiva Tankamani, an integration technical architect. In this video, we are going to talk about uh, how to safeguard and protect our APIs, particularly the critical and transactional APIs from unwanted things happening and then uh, crashing the API. So it's sometimes it's very important uh, in a scenario where there are transactional APIs like order processing system and uh, uh, employee uh, onboarding system where the new uh, new order or new employee details are created and which is always very critical to uh, or it's impossible to get those data again uh, in case uh, we lose them. For example, in an order processing system, the order is received uh, from the JMS queue or uh, from any queue and uh, the same is validated and processed and pushed into the e-commerce system or underlying database. So uh, it is not in our hands uh, to control external uh, API or database applications availability and hence it might subject to uh, connectivity failure or some other unexpected uh, uh, connectivity issues. There are some standard and usual way uh, how we handle the situation. For example, uh, for the database, uh, we introduce a reconnection strategy where we try uh, reconnecting the uh, database or other APIs uh, in a specific interval. Say, for example, we retry three times in an interval of, uh, say, three seconds. So, uh, API tries to reconnect three times and then uh, um, it tries to restore and then try to uh, establish the connection to the database or external system. Uh, however, it's not 100% guaranteed that uh, the system or database might come back up and running uh, within a short span of time. But still, uh, suppose we uh, make a reattempt uh, thrice in a span of 5 seconds interval. So, uh, it is possible that it doesn't come back uh, within 15 seconds or expected uh, time interval. But what if it takes a minute? So, one minute is not a long uh, duration of time, but still, um, what happens within those uh, 45 seconds is uh, order keeps piling up and then API uh, consumes this and then it tries to uh, establish the connection and uh, it repeatedly failed. So and then it might, uh, uh, we might lose the data and then uh, we might lose uh, precious order or precious information. So let's see a typical use case uh, uh, in a, in a sequence of uh, order in which the failure happens and then we will see uh, how to design uh, this circuit breaker. So th this is a typical use case. So user sends online orders to the queue and uh, you can imagine that a user uh, uh, is in the um, online order system and then he browses through orders and then he creates a shopping cart and finally purchases the uh, order and that order might contain two or three items. So it comes through our system and then uh, sits into the queue and our flow consumes that order and then flow persists the order into the e-commerce system or underlying database. But uh, the database or e-commerce system connectivity fails and uh, uh, but uh, user doesn't know this. I mean uh, whomsoever goes to the online shop doesn't know the underlying connectivity failure and uh, he continues to do this uh, online order system accepts and then flow continues to consume this order continuously and uh, so we have a, a an api with the reconnection strategy it tries to uh, reconnect thrice and still the connectivity fails and the orders are lost so uh, this is a typical use case and uh, we are trying to resolve it so uh, the solution is a circuit breaker. So we are going to see how the circuit breaker works. So let's see, take a look at this uh, diagram. So this is the use case explained and, uh, um, and we have a solution called a circuit breaker. So let's see how it, this works. So we have the message and uh, the online order is pushed into the queue. And uh, it tries to establish a connection to the database and it fails and the uh, reconnection strategy tries uh, second time and third time and the, even the third time is failing. So this is considered to be one order failure. So the circuit breaker K 
keeps count of this order failure so this is failed once and the next order comes and it keeps track of this count and second time also fails the second time also uh, the api carries out uh, uh, the reconnection thrice and that also fails and the third order comes and third order also, uh, also failing so we will we will have a threshold so circuit breaker will have either three three orders or five orders as a threshold so it checks for the uh, uh, total span of one minute and even then the connectivity is uh, not established and then it fails so it automatically switches off uh, the functionality of this uh, main flow thereby uh, it uh, completely disables the functionality and hence uh, the message doesn't get consumed uh, uh, from the queue and thereby protecting all the orders that keeps piling up and stored into the queue so circuit breaker uh, just uh, disables and then sends out the alert mechanism to the user uh, saying that the underlying connectivity fails so uh, obviously uh, the operations team makes a call and then looks into it and then we realize uh, um, the uh, connectivity is established again back up running so again we will have a mechanism or circuit breaker will enable this uh, flow totally again in order to start functioning from the scratch so whatever messages that piled up uh, and waiting in the queue will get consumed one by one and again all the orders will successfully start flowing through so what's the advantage of this so in earlier video we have seen uh, how to manage the failure and then how to recover and uh, so where we have seen uh, all these failed orders will be kept into the uh, specific folder and then um, the reprocessing will take it and then resend it to the uh, flow but however there are some drawbacks in this strategy because again and again it processes these uh, orders unnecessarily uh, um, having known that this the other system is completely down so the circuit breaker avoids uh, these uh, additional functionality that runs unnecessarily if number of orders failed is exceeding the threshold say three or five max then it automatically disables the functionality so this is what we are going to see uh, uh, and this is what is called a circuit breaker pattern and we are not going to see exactly uh, to design circuit breaker pattern because uh, that's a bit complex but uh, in this video i'll try to explain the basics of uh, uh, circuit breaker patterns and the underlying features that are provided in mulesoft which you can uh, simply design by using some simple design techniques uh, on how we can avoid this and then uh, makes the api running smooth let's get started so before we start looking into mule 4 flow and uh, i would like to walk through a simple groovy script uh, that helps us uh, to design this uh, circuit breaker pattern so uh, here is the script this is very simple to understand so we use registry and uh, registry is the mule soft uh, uh, set of components that we have it in the particular application so we are able to retrieve this uh, from the registry by looking up the name called uh, the flow name so whichever the flow name that you decide so that will be retrieved and it will be received uh, uh, into the uh, object so um, the groovy script effectively uh, carries out this stop functionality and also it checks with the boolean function called is started so is started will tell us if the flow is already in a started state or stopped state and if it is true we carry out a verb called stop so this verb is a functionality that stops the uh, execution of this flow uh, from the mule it's like uh, physically going and stopping that particular flow but it's happening only in the context of flow and not the entire application so it's a very simple and effective feature which we can try to use it but uh, you have to take an extreme care uh, while you while you are uh, running this because uh, flow might get stopped and if it is not properly designed it might not come back up and running at all and it will lead to unnecessarily problems so uh, so whatever way we, where we are trying to uh, make an advanced design like this to protect the api there is an always there is a downside of design uh, with a flaw that's going to impact it so we need to take an extreme care uh, to when you are using this uh, particular functionality here is a simple application which i have designed 
and uh, it contains uh, three flows which I am going to explain and walk through one by one. For simplicity, I will also put up this code in the description below. You can uh, you can refer this source code and then you can understand because there are small small techniques used throughout this flow which you can refer and then get benefited uh, from this source code. So there are three flows that are used and I, we will uh, see what each flow does in the first place and then we will dig deeper. So this flow, the first flow uh, is a scheduler that consumes, uh, this is a JMS uh, message. This flow consumes the messages one by one periodically, not uh, all at once because it, uh, it takes once in one message in two seconds. Uh, so uh, it just takes it one uh, each uh, each two seconds or five seconds you can configure it retrieve the message and uh, prepare the information from the uh, incoming message and then retrieves the name and puts it into the database so we have an employee master so whichever name that's coming from this payload is extracted and then inserted into the database so it's a very simple flow and I will, we will see uh, why these error handling techniques are introduced and the purpose behind it we will see in a short while. And we have second flow. So the second flow is constructed uh, with a groovy script. Um, and this is uh, used to toggle or start and stop the flow by means of the HTTP uh, URL. Because once the application gets stopped, and you need a mechanism to bring it back up and running manually uh, because uh, you know once the connectivity goes wrong uh, for a longer time the circuit breaker will disable this flow completely so it goes to the operations team and customer support team uh, looks into it and then contacts the uh, end application and then once the end application is uh, back up and running uh, they need to ha have some mechanism to uh, start up the flow once again. So for that, uh, we are giving this uh, uh, HTTP flow where the um, customer care team can just click this URL to bring it back up and running. And there is a third uh, um, flow, which is simply uh, takes in the data and uh, uh, publishes the data um, into the queue. So this third flow uh, is used to uh, take the message from the uh, HTTP uh, URL and uh, publishes the incoming message into the queue. It's a very simple uh, flow to read the data and then uh, pushes it into the queue. So these are the three uh, flows that we used. But this is the major functionality where uh, um, I would like you to pay attention. So uh, this uh, is prepared under the try catch so we have uh, two on error continue with two different types one is jms timeout and another one is db connectivity suppose the jms timeout is possible uh, when when the queue contains no information but since we constructed the scheduler it will try to read the data once in five minutes five seconds and then if there is no message it should simply understand that there are no message and then simply simply ignore because it's not a technical error but however there are uh, um, there is a second set of uh, error handling uh, for this uh, database connectivity and we have given the type db connectivity so if the db connectivity happens we have a script and uh, that script uh, uh, helps us to stop the application so um, this is what i explained it in the notepad uh, uh, separately so uh, it goes and stops this particular flow uh, permanently so this you can see this name of the flow is the same as this flow you can see here this is circuit breaker flow and this is also circuit breaker flow which uh, schedules and consumes the data to process insertion of the database record so this is completely disabled uh, when the DB connectivity error happens and this is what is available here and uh, here you can note that it is only used to stop and not for toggling. But here in the HTTP listener, when the customer support team clicks this URL, this should toggle because uh, uh, it should be available for both uh, start as well as to stop. So what happens when we click this URL, uh, there is a, a groovy script which I can enlarge here. 
So if it is started, it stops. If it is stopped state, it starts. So it just toggles the state of the flow from stop to start status and then vice versa. So this is a simple design and uh, we will see how this works. Here is the demo of this uh, uh, application. So all the three flows are functioning fine and uh, particularly the scheduler starts running. You can see here now we don't have any messages uh, in the queue. So and hence what happens is uh, you can see um, we get the message no message available and ignoring. So let's go back to the uh, database table where we have the employee master where uh, the flow is trying to uh, insert the given name into this. So we can publish the message in two different ways. Number one, we can use this uh, ActiveMQ UI console to publish the queue. And uh, we also have uh, written the flow which receives the JSON message and then pushes into the queue. So here is the, uh, the application that started. This is localhost uh, with the name publish. So this is uh, publishing this name into the queue. Let's do that. So we published. And it says employee details published to queue successfully. So now let's see the, uh, so uh, there is a database insert that happened. And you can see here the given name has been entered. And then we will try with uh, some other name. Say Sachin. So the employee details published. You can see here uh, uh, SQL logs that's happening. And then let's go into the database table and you can see such in. So it's happening fine. Now uh, let's test the same thing uh, by means of uh, um, ActiveMQ UI console. And we copy this and we put it here. And we will change the name to Coley. try this and now we should see Virat Kohli uh, published into this DB table. So it's happening fine through UI as well as via our functionality. So now what uh, we are going to do is uh, um, we are going to bring the DB down and uh, say this is the MySQL server which I'm going to pass. Let's completely stop then. So the MySQL is, uh, server is stopped. Now uh, let's publish this. Because uh, a database is stopped, but the queue is continuing to function. Uh, so we will still be able to publish the message. And uh, now we will publish a uh, couple day. And it says details published into the queue. And let's go and see if it is there or not. Uh, we will see. Uh, we will click this. How do we browse? should be able to see the messages that's fine so um, now we will publish some other uh, record this one other Anand and that is also published successfully so now let's see the console now you can see here the error happened because of the DB error and uh, let me clear the log so that you can see here. Now, the error happened and it would have gone through this DB connectivity and uh, script got executed successfully and then flow is stopped. Now, you don't see any logs because uh, the scheduler is not running now, but only the messages are kept piling up in the, in the queue, we have to assume, because there is nothing happening here. The application is up and running, but uh, uh, the scheduler uh, doesn't seem to be running. So now how do we make it uh, up and running fine again? So now we should not stop the application or restart the application because uh, 
the application might contain other APIs. That's the beauty of this uh, circuit breaker pattern. So it only stops the specific flow uh, that is interrupted. So let's go back and then see here. This is the flow toggle. Uh, so we can invoke that again. Let me refresh the screen to do that again. And now it says flow toggled successfully. And let's see. Now you can see here the DB connectivity, it starts to happen again. Again, it says, say stopping the flow. Now it's again, it's working as expected. So let's clear the log. Now again, the flow is stopped. Now let's go back and then uh, uh, make this database up and running. Now you can see the database started uh, up and running fine again. So now, as we know, the flow is already stopped because nothing is happening here. So let's go back and let's toggle again. Now from stop again, it should uh, uh, bring it back up and running. So let's trigger it. It says flow toggled successfully. Now let's go back. Now it's again uh, started up and running. You can see started uh, seeing this uh, uh, SQL console logs because it says uh, the starting flow it started up and running now we should see those uh, two messages that we earlier published uh, if this uh, flow is working fine we should see additional data here now we had only three now let's refresh and run now you can see here vishy anant has been uh, published successfully so um, uh, this is the example but uh, in this demo we have done only uh, basics and we are only showing the foundation and building blocks of how we can make this circuit breaker pattern works. Now in the next video, if time permits, I'm going to enhance this APA and its feature so that this happens only after the specific threshold count. For example, the DB connectivity, I mean immediately this is bringing down the application. So instead of that, what we can do is we can use a, um, um, I mean like uh, a data store uh, value where we can persist the number of uh, times it uh, keeps failing and we can execute this uh, based on this choice router. We can introduce this choice router here and then only upon uh, threshold count is in the multiple of 3 or 5. Say for example failure 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 it won't stop but if it reaches 10 it will stop. So again, uh, when it comes back up and running 11, 12, 13, 14, it will still try and then error out. And for 15, the, it will stop the flow. So we can design this uh, that works only when the threshold count exceeds a certain count like 5 or 10. So, um, so I will upload this uh, uh, source code uh, into the description below. You can please refer that. That's it in this video. And uh, uh, sorry if I made it very elaborated explanation because this is uh, uh, very complex and uh, this might be critical when you are uh, developing some critical APIs. Uh, this, uh, uh, this design and features will come definitely handy in your uh, real time situations. Hope you will be uh, benefiting uh, out of this particular video. And uh, if you like it, please um, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe my videos. Soon I will come up with this part two of this uh, to indicate uh, how to introduce this threshold count and uh, stopping the application only upon threshold count exceeds. Thanks for watching this video and I'll meet you all in the next video which is an interesting video soon. Thanks again. Bye.